This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum, bringing you episode 18 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Westford Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, May 2nd, 1908. And I will add context as we read along to elaborate on what was happening in Westford 113 years ago. The first uh, section in the May 2nd newspaper was the About Town section. The first ball of the Westford Fire Department last week, Friday evening, was a showy affair. At least those bright new firemen's uniforms added an entirely new display to the town hall. Uh, The fire department had recently purchased bright red shirts for all of their members. The Grand March was led in officer-like manner by Captain John A. Healy of the A.R. Schott Fire Company after which came the dancing program of the evening, and the red shirts were as lively of movement as at a call to a fire. The Rosedale Orchestra of Lowell furnished music, it being their first appearance in town. Their selections were popular and timely, and caught the feet of all who danced and the ear of all with untrained feet. As a financial affair, it turned into the treasury of the A.R. Schott Company about $40. Justice demands that an error in reporting the officers of the ladies' degree team last week, whereby Mrs. Grieg was assistant steward, should be corrected to read Mrs. G.E. Gould, who acted this part in a manner to deserve mention. One wonders uh, who reports these errors, whether uh, Sam Taylor discovered it himself and corrected it, or whether Mrs. Gould called him and told him that she should have been mentioned. <laughs> The next meeting of the Grange will be held Thursday evening, May 7th, with an address by Mrs. S. Ella Southland of Athol and a report of the Committee of Middlesex Pomona on cooperation. The Middlesex Pomona Grange was a grange that uh, was headquartered in Lowell but included members from around uh, the Lowell area. Farm buildings of Michael L. McGlinchey, situated at Westford Corner on Nebneset Road, were destroyed by fire Thursday afternoon. The church bell at Brookside rang the alarm, and a large crowd rallied for for relief. Nearly all the personal property was saved. The cause of the fire, while not certain, was thought to be from a defective chimney. Mrs. McGlinchey is station agent at Brookside. The reference to the church bell at Brookside is a little suspect. I don't know of any church at Brookside, and I I think the bell must have been either at the Methodist Church in nearby West Chelmsford or at the Abbott Mills at Brookside. A collection will be taken up next Sunday at the Unitarian Church for the Chelsea Fire Relief Fund. Honorable Herbert E. Fletcher is confined to his home by illness and is under the skillful management of Dr. Sleeper. Special town meeting this Saturday afternoon, May 2nd, at 3 o'clock. All voters cordially invited, especially those who, can, who cannot be happy under a higher tax rate, for, for the warrant has been growing for two weeks and now contains nine articles, nearly all of which have the flavor of a higher tax rate. The following is the condensed essence of the warrant. Article 1, to choose a moderator. Article 2, to hear the report of the committee on enlarging Forge Village Schoolhouse. Article 3, to appropriate money for said enlargement. Article 4, to see if the town will appropriate $150 for celebration of 4th of July. Article 5, to see if the town will establish the pay of the regular and call firemen. Article 6, to see if the town will appropriate money to build three firehouses for the fire department, Article 7, to see if the town will confirm the action of the selectmen in the settlement with the Lowell and Fitchburg Electric Railway, Article 8, to see if the town will appropriate money do the town from the Lowell and Fitchburg Railway to repair the road on the line of the spur track, Article 9, to see if the town will instruct the Finance Committee to establish the salaries of town officers. It is expected that the Ford's Village School will will diminish the amount of money in the pockets of the taxpayers 
from $6,000 to $8,000, and the new firehouses, $1,500 more, and with other contingencies, it is easy to see the final disposition of $10,000 in the twinkling of an eye, a much quicker time than the average taxpayer can produce his proportion of the tax. Let your action take warning by some of our hasty actions of past years, and please bear in mind that at the present time, the town has schoolhouses to sell at auction and contemplating building more. Uh, We'll hear more about the results of that town meeting in a week or two. Center section is next, Westford Center. Miss Manuel, was, who was recently called to her home in Franklin Falls, New Hampshire, will not return to her teaching at the academy this term and probably not in the fall. She is keeping house for her father and brother. Miss Babbitt of Fitchburg is taking the place made vacant by Miss Manuel. C. Willis Hildreth, while trimming apple trees one day last week, fell and sustained bruises and a bad shaking up, which interferes with his usual busy activities. Mrs. Frank C. Hildreth received a letter recently from a cousin in Chelsea telling of some cases resulting from the recent uh, bad fire of which she had personal knowledge and of her own efforts to help what she could and of how much real good more help would be. Miss Hildreth, Mrs. Hildreth, with characteristic kindness and energy, interested others with the result of a good donation of clothing, food, and money being sent where it would be immediate good, where it would do immediate good. Measles are quite prevalent in the village among the children. There are at least ten families who have one or more cases. Thus far, they have assumed a light form of the disease. School physician Dr. Blaney is keeping watch in the schools to prevent further spending. This was long before we had a measles uh, vaccine, of course. Donald McLeon is seriously ill with pneumonia at his home in the south part of the town. Edward M. Abbott Hose Company No. 1 had its first regular drill at the center of the town Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Tests were made at half a dozen different hydrants with the result of raising a good stream of water in each case with one exception. One hydrant was found to be defective and this will be remedied. The men of the company manifest good interest and have profited well by what instruction they have received. Dr. F. E. Emrich gave a thoughtful and optimistic address at the Congregational Church Sunday morning. Dr. Emmerich is an interesting speaker and thoroughly understands his subject. He told of the problem of the small, struggling church in our own state and the great need of missionary effort near at hand. In the evening, a large audience gathered to hear Mr. Marshall's stereopticon address on, quote, the beauties of Japan, end quote, with about 60 slides. The next section is the Graniteville section. The St. John's Minstrels of North Chelmsford furnished an excellent entertainment in aid of St. Catherine's Church in Town Hall, Westford, on Thursday evening that was very largely attended. Supper was served after the entertainment and followed by general dancing. Many were present from Graniteville, Forge, Westford, Ayer, Littleton, North Chelmsford, and surrounding towns. All had a thoroughly good time. The affair was a great social and financial success. Special cars, that is trolleys, conveyed the people to their homes after the dance. Joel Wall had general charge of arrangements. Bert DeRone, who recently returned from the South, will catch for the Hamilton, Ontario baseball team this coming summer. He was one of the fine baseball players that came out of uh, Graniteville. It appears that L.P. Palmer has made arrangements to take out a liquor license in this town and will start at once fixing up his place on Main Street. Uh, That's North Main Street. It is thought that the people here will have the privilege of seeing an open bar here in the course of two or three weeks. I'm sorry, this is, we're talking about Graniteville, not Forge Village. The next section is baseball. The Forge Village baseball team visited here last Saturday afternoon and met defeat at the hands of the Sons of Rest by the score of 21-16. to 16. 
The game assumed the proportions of a slugging match on both sides, and owing to the fact that the local club was longer-winded, succeeded in landing the game. The features of the game were the heavy batting of Healy and Mike Ledwith and the fielding of Gardell for the Sons of Rest, the all-around work of du Dumont and batting of Elliott for the Forge team. Healy and Darling were the battery for the locals, while Wilson, Spinner, and Martin performed a like service for the visitors. These two clubs will meet again in the near future when the Forge team expects to win back their lost laurels. I, I was trying to find out how old these people were, and the only one I could find for sure was Mike Ledwith, who, who was 23 at the time. So these are young men of the villages of Westford and uh, Forge Village. The next section is the Forge Village section. Joseph Edwards and Sidney Farrar of Melrose were guests of Mr. and Mrs. W.E. Parsons last week, Thursday. Mrs. Mr. Farrar is the father of Miss Geraldine Farrar, the noted grand opera singer. Mr. and Mrs. Farrar and daughter go abroad again this week to fill Miss Farrar's engagements, after which they expect to go to South America. I was curious as to who this Geraldine Farrar was. She was born in 1882 in Melrose, Mass., and studied voice in Boston, New York, Paris, and Berlin. She made her opera debut in Gounod's Faust in 1901, and she debuted at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City in 1906 in uh, another uh, Gounod uh, opera, Romeo and Julia, and a, a year later appeared in the Met's first first performance of Puccini's Madame Butterfly. She remained with the Met until her retirement in 1922, singing 29 roles in nearly 500 performance performances. She also appeared in several silent films from 1915 to 1920, notably Cecil Bill B. DeMille's adaptation of Carmen and as Joan of Arc in the 1970, 1917 film Joan the Woman. She died in 1967. One wonders just how uh, an opera singer performs in a silent movie. Miss Bertha Wilson, age 19, fell out of a hammock one day this week and broke one bone of her arm, Dr. Blaney was called. Our sick people seem to be convalescing, although Miss, Mrs. Sarah Lawrence is very feeble. The little Boucher baby seems to be improving. Our little son, uh, John Del Favaro, that's uh, D-E-L space capital F-A-V-E-R-O, came to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Bartolo Del Favaro Saturday, April 23rd. Mr. Favaro has gone to Italy and word has been received of his illness, which is so serious that his mother has gone, has gone to him. Presumably she was also living over here. The next section is called Dramatic. The Fords Village Dramatic Club made its first appearance in My Cousin Timmy. Uh, they spell it T-I-M-M-I-E in the newspaper. A comedy in two acts last Saturday evening. Uh, this was probably My Cousin Timmy, T-I-M-M-Y, written by Thatcher Howland Guild uh, and published in 1903 when he was a graduate student at Harvard University. In 1906, he wrote Illinois Loyalty, which is the fight song for the University of Illinois, where he taught English. Uh, back to the newspaper, the play was thoroughly enjoyed by a large audience, the hall being filled to its utmost capacity and many present from out of town. Miss Rose Northrup as Miss Alderney, mistress of a select school for girls, who was always preaching the good qualities of her cousin Timmy, did a clever piece of acting. All took their parts well and deserve much credit. Mr. Long sang two selections, and Miss Catherine Brown also sang very pleasantly. Miss Edith Normington was the accompani accomp accompanist. Dancing was enjoyed afterwards to music by Harry Brown and Sarah Precious. The affair was a success, socially and financially. That's the news in Westford for the week ending May 2, 1908. Thank you for listening, and thank you uh, to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions from the Wardsman 
at the Westford Historical Society's website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.